I'll share. This is just a dream, but it really messed with me for a while. Be me. My four closest friends and I are groomsmen at a wedding. I don't know whose wedding, it's not relevant. At the wedding venue, there's a photo gallery. Plain white room, full of framed pictures. The pictures are of guests at the wedding, including my friends and I. We're looking at the pictures, reminiscing about times we've had together. Feels good. Suddenly, a frantic woman rushes into the room. She's freaking the fuck out, screaming for help. There has been an accident. One of the bridesmaids has died. This feels wrong. I don't know how or why, just dream logic, but I suddenly become aware that the world follows a script. This bridesmaid's death was unscripted. It wasn't supposed to happen. Feeling of dread washes over me. I turn to look at the photos and they're all changing. A picture of my friend Tom at the Eiffel Tower turns into a picture of Tom at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. A picture taken at baseball game turns into a picture at a football game. It's all shit like that until I find a photo with me in it. In my photo, I'm just fading away, disappearing like Marty McFly in Back to the Future. I start panicking. I turn away from the wall to find that I am now the only person in the room. Every picture is a picture of me, and I'm disappearing from every single one of them. Absolute terror. A certain picture catches my eye. It's a picture of me sleeping in my bed. I realize that I'm dreaming, but I don't wake up. I just become paralyzed. I'm completely transfixed, just staring at this picture as I slowly fade out of it. Worst sense of hopelessness and despair I've ever felt. Feels like hours. Finally, when I disappear completely, I wake up, laying in the exact same position as in the photo. What the fuck? Walking on River Street in Savannah, Georgia. I'm a kid. It's 1996. It was hot. Me and my brother get thirsty. Ask dad for a dollar to buy sodas in store. He gives me a dollar, and we go in some gift store or something. Nobody's at counter. There's just a small, narrow wooden staircase near the door. We just decided to go up there. Savannah is an old town. This was probably a house in the 18th or 19th century. Upstairs is dimly lit. Only candles on the floor. The candles are in a big pentagram. Me and my bro walk around it, amazed. We notice there are leaves and rose petals scattered all over the floor, as well as the pentagram. Lines are drawn with white chalk on the wooden floor in a crude pentagram. There's nothing in this room but the candle pentagram and a single wall-mounted shelf. On the shelf is a diorama or whatever you would call that. It's like a murder scene of a bunch of dead people on a field. Plastic green army men with limbs chopped off and red paint for blood everywhere. One of the green army men is not chopped up. He's in the middle of the field in a pentagram. Me and my brother are sufficiently scared and walk back downstairs. My dad is downstairs looking around this weird store. The only drinks they had were root beer and a small cooler in the back. A weird looking 50-ish guy comes out of the back. We put two root beers on the counter. As we're paying, he says, Did you boys walk upstairs? My dad looks angrily at us. Uh, yeah, for a second. He smiles at us. He's creepy as fuck looking. We walk out and start rambling to dad that there's this weird black magic shit upstairs. Dad just says, don't snoop around. I'll never forget that shit. That was hardcore weird. A strange girl in elementary school cursed me, and what she predicted actually happened. Soon after, I discovered that her family was involved with magic and these African-based religions as well. The brat says I would fall and hit my head in the floor. She describes in detail how it would happen. I laugh because it's ridiculous. The other day, I actually fell and hit my head on the floor in my room. The worst part is that, for a moment, I felt an invisible hand pulling my foot. After that, I avoided her for a long time. A few years ago, 22 years old, visiting my mother, end up sleeping there. A house without a fence, five huge trees in the backyard on a deserted street. I sleep in the living room and leave the kitchen light that traces the backyard on. In the middle of the night, I wake up with something trying to force the back door. 
spend a few seconds trying to process what's happening. Then, the thing starts pounding on the door. I'm scared, not knowing what to do. With each passing second, it hits harder and faster. A thunderous force. The entire wall starts shaking. Imagine Jojo punching the hell out of a wooden door. <laughs> order, order, order. <laughs> Damn, this thing's gonna break down the door. I'm fucked. Still on the mattress. I look around for something to defend myself. Find nothing. In desperation, I only have the idea of hiding in the dark. My plan was to hide behind the door, and when it walks in, I'll attack. When I try to get up, my body is frozen. Realize I'm still asleep. Think to myself, wake up, damn it, we're gonna die. Jump off the mattress, extremely exhausted, and realize the thing is no longer there. I stand there with my heart pounding for a few more minutes, waiting for the thing to come back and pound. Nothing happens. Go to my mother and stepfather and ask if they heard the noise of someone trying to knock down the door. Both say no. My mother tells me to pray. Don't tell me, oh, that's sleep paralysis. It was as if I were in an astral projection. When I woke up, everything was exactly the same as in the dream. Besides, how the hell did I know I was sleeping inside a dream? And how could I see around me even though I was asleep? This was the most terrifying thing that has ever happened to me. And mind you, I've seen some shit. Every night when I went to sleep, I would feel fear even though I'm 25. I was afraid of being watched. I began to notice out of the corner of my eye, one of those shadow beings near the wall, exactly between my bed and my brother's. When I looked directly at it, it dissolved into the dark, but with my peripheral vision, I was able to see him clearly. It was a man my height, wearing an overcoat and a hat. At first I wasn't afraid, I thought it was all in my head. It started appearing there every damn night. There were nights I prayed out of fear, and then it would always disappear. And then I went without praying for some nights, and it would come back. Until one dawn, I woke up feeling uneasy. When I sat up, I was flabbergasted. This time, the shadow man was crystal clear. He seemed flesh and bone. I jumped so hard that I ended up falling on the other side of the bed. And after that, I started praying every night, and it never appeared again. One day, at home, lying on my stomach at bed with my laptop, probably lurking in here. With my peripheral vision, I noticed my sister walking into my room, push my laptop aside to look at her and ask, what do you want? She straight up disappears, searched the whole house for her, not a sign. A few hours later, she arrives home with my father. I believe that these things only happened because of my sister, who practices Macumba, rituals from Afro-Brazilian religions. She is a half-sister from my father's side, and her mother was involved in Macumba. She has even mentioned that she has cast several spells on my father's current girlfriend. She always liked me and consistently disliked my brother. She used to give me food and little gifts, which I was hesitant to accept. There was a time when I started having incestual dreams about her, where she would force me to kiss her. There was also an instance when, on the same night my brother argued with her, he woke up claiming that someone was suffocating him. I live at the top of a mountain in the Appalachians. The spirits of these woods can feel quite hostile and unwelcoming, but once you show yourself as well-intentioned, I feel that the woods become more welcoming. I would describe them as loyal to the good, but mysterious and hostile to strangers. I've had personal experiences with these land spirits when I was younger. I'll list a few experiences in upcoming posts. When I was younger, I hunted quite frequently in the Appalachian woods, sitting at a tree. At this point, it had been days, and I had not seen a single deer, which is unusual in these particular woods. Hours pass. Woods are deathly silent. Decide, since much isn't going on, to close my eyes and meditate on the quiet peace of the woods. Suddenly, get a vision of myself unloading my rifle, then setting it down on the ground. After that vision, I also have a vision of an old man speaking wise things to me, although I cannot remember any specific words. Snap out of the visions. Decide, fuck it. I'll unload my rifle and place it on the ground, as the vision showed. 
Almost immediately after laying the rifle down, a herd of deer run up on me. They surround me and hang out close to me for a while. Astonished by this quote-unquote coincidence, I sat and watched them while they sniffed and walked around me. Eventually, they wander off. The rest of the day, I just left my rifle unloaded and ended up seeing multiple bucks and does who passed by and came within feet of me. Each of them seemed comfortable and not on edge as they normally are. I left that day feeling more rewarded by this experience than leaving with an actual buck. I also often hunted in another section of woods, a couple hours away from the spot I previously mentioned. In these woods, I would often hear a female voice taunting me or harassing me in my head. This particular place always had the same effect, no matter what. The voice was distinctly feminine and would try to insult and belittle me when I hunted these lands. Whatever it was, definitely did not appreciate my presence. Mind you, this happened not only once, but multiple times through multiple years of hunting this area. Shadow People and Sleep Paralysis I've had a couple sleep paralysis events and a shadow person encounter, and I was wondering if anyone could give me some insight. I'll go in order. These events occurred over the last two years, first with the bathroom sink turning itself on. Twice I had the bathroom sink turn on by itself. Typically, I shower at night, get ready for bed, and then listen to music or whatever for an hour or so in bed. Two times I have pulled out my earbuds to hear a noise in the bathroom. I get up to check and I find that the sink is on. Nothing else spooky happens. Next, the shadow person. I flew to Armenia last January or February for five weeks to visit a friend. The apartment I stayed at had the bedroom in the basement. I arrived late at night, so I went straight to bed when I got there. At some point in the night, I woke up. I sat up slightly and looked at the foot of my bed. Standing there was a human-shaped shadow figure between seven or eight feet tall. I wasn't frightened. I simply told it, I'm tired, leave me alone, and I went back to sleep. Nothing else like that happened during my visit. Sleep paralysis stories now. I used to have sleep paralysis constantly as a child, starting at around six years old. I'm talking like four or five times every morning after I woke up. My eyes were always closed during these moments, and I never had any auditory hallucinations, so they never scared me. I remember the first time it happened, and I just rationalized it as my brain being awake, but my body being asleep. Really, it just always annoyed me because... I would be unable to flip sides when I started getting uncomfortable. I'm not sure when they started to slow down, and now as an adult in my early 30s, it rarely happens. Last year though, I had two sleep paralysis events, both of which included visual hallucinations for the first, and so far, last time. These occurrences happened back to back over the course of two nights. All I can really remember is turning my head to the left and seeing a corrupted version of my brother lying next to me. The only way I know how to describe him is that he looked possessed. He was staring back at me with black eyes and making a sort of gasping for air sound. I believe there was another entity standing next to his side of the bed, but I didn't really pay any attention to it. I was terrified, and the only thing I knew to do was say or think, the power of Christ compels you. After a few moments, I had control back of my body and everything was back to normal. I guess I should have said early on that I live alone. And finally, the last sleep paralysis event that happened was around three months ago. I was laying on my back and woke up with my eyes open. I couldn't see anything, but I could feel multiple presences in my room, either two or three. Okay, I, so this is gonna sound really corny and it sounds so dumb, but I swear this is what happened. As I said in a previous post, I'm pretty much always annoyed when sleep paralysis happens. This time was a little different. I was annoyed with the entities in my room, as if they were the ones causing it. I managed to force up my right hand and lift up my middle finger. Suddenly, my hand disappeared, and I panicked. Without thinking, I forced up my left hand and gave the entities another middle finger. Instantly, I regained full control, and everything was back to normal. I'll put this out there. I'm a 37-year-old man. As a child, 
I would always see shadow people moving about. Quickly through rooms, trees, crossing through streets. Never directly close. It kind of bothered me seeing them, but not really, because they were quick and gone, and never came at me or acted in a way where they could see me. I would always shy away, though, because even though I thought shadow men was my imagination, deep down, I was scared. One day, though, I was with my cousin, also male, a year older than me, and he saw one with me. We were playing toy guns or army men in the woods, and it was my cousin and I against my older brother and his friend. You know the game. When you see one another, you yell, bang, bang, and argue on who shot first. Anyway, my cousin and I were stalking about, and we came across a large area of land that was cleared out for housing development. We were on a hill and laying down, looking down at it. Looked like a desert with huge mounds of dirt and broken trees made by the bulldozers. And there, I see a shadow man run gliding across the vast open space to behind one of the giant mounds. As the shadow man was moving, my reaction in my mind was, Hey, great. But as I was watching it, my cousin asks in a concerned voice, Is... is your brother wearing all black? I knew right away that he saw it too, and that I wasn't crazy. I knew he asked because my brother was the fastest running kid we knew, but not that fast, not even close. So I looked at him and I told him that, no, my brother is not wearing black. I asked him if he saw a black shadow man running just to make sure for myself, and he said, yeah, and explained how he saw it run across the field and then behind the mound. I was kind of excited to hear that he saw it too. So I convinced him for us to go down and check it out. He was all for it and not the least bit scared. At least, I didn't notice he was scared, but maybe I didn't want to notice. I wanted to get close and see and confront it. We had our quote-unquote guns. I was confident, and we were in army mode. So we run down to the mound, and I walk one end, and he walks the other. When we both came around full circle, nothing was there. At this point, we did get scared and we agreed that we should leave and go home. We ran so fast out of the woods. When we got out, we screamed for my brother and his friend's name over and over and said that we were done playing. With every passing moment, we grew more scared. Finally, my brother and his friend, the badass heroes they were to me, came walking out of the woods with smiles and swagger because they won the game, and we left and quit, and they dogged us on about it. Any other time I would whine and talk shit, but not that time though. I was just happy to see my brother, and I just wanted to go home. My cousin and I never spoke of it again. They never speak on it. We haven't talked in decades. Not sure he would even remember. Watched a YouTube video about how this Randonautica thing is technological synchronicity, magic or something. Decided to give it a shot. Apparently, you have to set an intention beforehand. Try to asking for a sign from God. Listen to chants and whatever other religious material I could find while on the way. By foot, when I got to the area, I had to pass through a small empty field with nothing but ruins of some wooden structure and trash. Out of nowhere, I suddenly felt immense unease, and I ran to the end of it. The very first thing I saw after leaving the field was, I am written in graffiti. There were suspicious amounts of shops, named after kingdoms, castles, empire, etc., in that area. Also, some stuff about eternal life, resurrection, comfort, and blood. What do? Live in southern part of New Jersey. All sand and marsh and pine barrens. Some fucked up shit went on here in the past between smuggling routes and the revolution era, to the mafia dumping bodies and the modern pineys, i.e. redneck junkies and commandos. Friends and I used to go scampering through the woods looking for the Jersey Devil or the den houses of local cults. Around when I was eight, there was a huge forest fire, which is unusual here, out in the woods area to the southeast of town. If you ride by now, you can still see the black and thinned out trees. The fire was insane, jumping roads and consuming huge chunks of land. Cops said it was arson, and the responsible party was never caught. 
Nothing to do here except in the woods or TV watching. Decide to explore the blackened forest when I'm 14. It's in biking distance. Grab water, head down, and find a good path in. There's a ton of fresh growth flora, thorn brambles, and fern, and whatever else. And the brambles grow thick and can be impenetrable unless you find a deer trail. Make sure a car isn't coming, head off road, and into path. Walk bike in. Stash bike behind thick growth out of view of road. Grab water bottle. Head in the woods. All the trees are ashy. Try not to touch any of them. Bark is like charcoal. In the immediate area, there aren't houses around, except a few on the absolute periphery of the woods chunk. It's divided by a few roads, but not much traffic. Place had never been right since the fire. Birds didn't nest there because all the good trees burned up. Animals had no prey because no birds and all the insects died and didn't spread back in to fill the gap yet. Entire food chain was fucked up. Not much left here except deer passing through on occasion. Fine path through the damn brambles. Every outing gets my legs shredded. That's just how it is here. Clouds are patchy, but take note of where the sun is. It's around two in the afternoon. I should have plenty of daylight. This way, I don't get my ass lost. Head out. Still has a thick scent, like going in a house that burned down. You can smell the charred wood. It feels off. I'm used to the birds and squirrels and other little critters making noise. But when no cars are coming, it's silent. Getting further from road, find a dry creek bed and head down because clear path from brambles. Sip water bottle. Stand around and look. Keep down the creek bed. See something ahead like a structure. Some kids or crackheads build a stick for it. A three wall barrier to one end with a log dragged into the middle. Char one off from piney ash cheeks. Half fast bonfire pit with some thin greenwood and an old half burned log. Couple of beer cans that didn't get too burned. Chill for a few. Sweat has dried from the bike ride. It's pretty nice. Take a sip from bottle. Vision is obscured with it in my face. See shape move off to my left periphery. Four feet off of the ground. It's bigger than a squirrel. Lower bottle. Look. Can't see anything. Stand up and look around. Might be a gang or a semi-feral dog. Don't see shit. Don't hear shit. Decide to keep moving. Head further in. Creek bed ends. Start winding through woods. Notice fresh carvings in a few of the trees. From a knife. Just miscellaneous shit like initials and some symbols. Swastikas. One had a penis. Litter scattered here and there. Surprisingly few. I'm about quarter through this block chunk. Climb up a little hill. Just a few feet. This is flat as pancake Jersey coastal plain. Soil basically sand and ash. Slipping. Put hand on tree to stabilize myself. Get to top. Hand is black from tree. A few beer bottles. Some scattered shell casing. Seen casing like that before from the deer hunters. Fuckers never clean the mess up. Wind kicking up. Feeling it even this deep in the woods. Cloud passes over sun. Look around, thinking whether to go forward or head back. Freeze. There's a goddamned figure down the hill. Stock still. Staring at me from half behind a bramble wall. It's just far enough that I can't make the features out. But it looks like it's wearing winter clothes. Like a scarf around its neck. It's goddamn summer. I can't see its face. Looks like a skinny teenager in bulky clothes. Don't know what he's on. Want to get out of there, but don't really want to turn my back on him. Think I should grab a stick. Look on the ground around me. In the half second that I'm glancing down, it moves. Look up while backpedaling. It's at the top of the end of the hill now. Standing still. My shorts are caught on the bramble. Try to pull away, but it's stuck. Drop water bottle in the dirt. Fumble at sticker bush. Eyes still on the fucker. What if its coat is up? Big ass scarf. Corded knit. Clothes are dirty. A bunch of holes and tears. Dark brown stains all over. Get sticker out of shorts. Fabric comes free. Move a few steps back towards the hole in the brush that I came in from. Testing whether the guy will jump at me. He's just standing there, watching. Tell him to fuck off. 
Turn halfway with my eyes still on him. Gonna get back down the hill. Wind is picking up. Snap from behind me. Reflexively turn to look at it. Blur of motion. The fucker in the old coat moves. Closed half the distance to me. Don't know what was behind me, but fuck it. I'm hauling ass out of here. Sprint like a motherfucker. Ripping through the bramble. Don't give a shit. I can't tell if he's following. I'm making a ton of noise plowing through the brush. Cloudy. No shadows. No light. Wind blowing my hair and my eyes. Dust and ash making eyes water. Focus on getting the fuck out of there. Running max speed. Beyond freaked out. Something jumps out of the bush. On my left. Think it's a dog. Sidestep to avoid hitting it. It's scrambling next to me. Coming at me. Not a dog. Folded over a guy in rags. Like old shirt and wife beater that are more whole than fabric. On its hands and feet like a wild man. Motions are faster than should be. Lunges for me. Dodge and sprint. Plow through a damned bush. No fucks given. Snapping branches off my arms. Are the thing is still behind me. I hear them both coming. They're screeching. Sounds like a fucked up cat. I have lost all sense of direction. Not on the creek bed. I'm just flat out running for it. Trying not to trip. Pushing to go faster because the fuckers are ripping through right behind me. Passing a bunch of mauled trees. Like someone went to town on them with a knife. For hours. Hacking the shit out of them. Screech. Heart and throat. Might have pissed myself. Scratchy scream was right behind me. Haul ass. Mass up ahead. Nowhere else to run. Go past. It's a deer carcass. Torn the hell to shreds. Like someone grabbed handfuls of its guts and threw them at the surrounding trees. Stringy intestines hanging off the charred bark. Blood splattered up the sides. Panting. Inhale deep lungful of the stench. Steaming dead animal reek from the heat. Want to gag and spit. Things are still coming behind me. Keep going full tilt. Too fast to be picky about trail. Getting fucked up. Arms are up to protect my face and eyes. Can't keep this pace much longer. Can't slow down. See edge of forest ahead. Put everything into it. The things are screeching unholy loud in my ear. We're tearing through the woods. Getting whacked in the arms and chest with branches and vines. Almost out. Chest burning. Whole mess of brambles strew across the trees like barbed wire. Go right the fuck through. Not a shit given. Snap the fucking vines with the force. Stumble down a slope to the road. Stagger across without looking. Turn around and watch Edge of Woods. They're screaming and screeching, but they don't come out. I've lost my momentum, shaking all over. I'm about to fall down. No cars around. This road doesn't even have lines. This isn't the road I came in. I must be on the other side of the woods. Hear the things moving around in the brush. Sun blinded, and I can't see them clearly inside the shade from new green trees. This is the creepiest shit I've ever heard. The sounds they made next. My eyes are watering up remembering it. Louder than anything has a right to be. Somewhere between a human and a cat. Shrill and grating. Cadence fucked up like an imitation of speech. We are not burned. They're tearing at the woods, snapping branches and breaking apart the trees. It's one of those long country roads bordered on both sides by woods for miles. There is no way in hell I'm going into the woods on the other side of the road. Start jogging down the road towards home. Hear the things in the woods following me. They sound four-legged, like they're on hands and feet again. Occasionally, they screech at me. In the distance, I hear another screech. The same kind. And another. Closer. Run. Go another half mile on pure fear. Don't turn down the road I normally would. Keep going straight because a few houses ahead. Sounds residing. I still hear them following me, but they aren't screaming anymore. No one in their damned yard. Still no cars. Going to go into town before heading across to home. Mouth dry, thirsty and tired, and covered in sweat. Slow down when I get to outskirts of town. Finally, a sidewalk after I cross a road. Can't hear the things. Woods are scrappy backyards by now, and at the end of the road crossing. Stop and pant. Still shaking. Legs are shredded. Blood all seeping down. Socks are stained. Arms and body and even cuts on my face. 
smeared ash all over. Left arm has a huge gash where I came through the bramble at the end of the woods, bleeding a lot and it hurts like a bitch. Walk back to house. Slip and shower before mom sees. Next day, tell them that my bike was just stolen. Look through my 15 year old sister's stuff while she was away because it's fucking hilarious. Found a diary, jackpot. It's all dated and organized and written with maximum precision, which is very odd because everything that she owns is filthy and her handwriting has always been a mess. Lots of cringy stuff for the most part, until about three months ago. She's extremely infatuated with this boy. The text about him gets more and more unhinged the deeper I read. From simple, I hope he notices me today, to paragraphs about how she followed him home and stole his jacket while his family was away. Huh. So that's where that unfamiliar oversized jacket came from. Paragraphs and detailed images of what it would be like to dissect him. She's an excellent artist, which made this 1,000 times more creepy. Paragraph after paragraph about all the freaky sex that she would have with him. Most of it ending in death. I'm honestly fucking scared. Hiking in the Olympic National Rainforest. By myself. Haven't seen anyone for hours. Turn around a bend in the trail. See another guy a few strides ahead of me. We smile and nod to each other as we pass. He's alone too. Turn around and pull out my pistol. Shoot him in the back of the head. Wait almost five minutes just staring at his body. Drag him off the trail about a hundred yards down a small ravine. Get back on the trail. Walk to my car. Drive home. Never hear about a person who had gone missing on the trail that day. I don't think he's ever been found to this day. Thought I would share this with you guys. Maybe you could help make some sense of it. Be September 2011. Be working on fishing trawler in Pacific Northwest. Cloudy day. Well, it's always cloudy. Don't catch shit. Hit half of our normal load at the end of the shift. Engine room goes down for maintenance. Captain says he wants everyone above deck. Cap is a bro. Throw out the big hook to try and catch some sturgeon because fuck it, we're bored. Nothing for half an hour. Cap comes back up when engine is fixed and tells us to get to work. We tow the big hook in and throw a little tuna off of the catch on there and try it. We all go below deck because Captain wants a meeting. Come back up an hour later after the meeting and we reel in the big hook, not expecting to see anything. We pry it up. One of the deck hands starts freaking out. Run over to the side of the deck to see the head of a fucking great white. We are so fucked. Start reeling it up so when we cut the line, we won't lose as much. It's fucking bitten in half. Something bit a goddamn full-size great white in half. Cut the line. Half-inch steel cable. Don't ever talk about it. The tag, initially attached in November 2003, off southwestern Australia, was set to record ambient temperatures and depth. Its data showed that four months after it was attached, the female great white abruptly dove to a depth of 1,900 feet, or 580 meters. The ambient temperature surrounding the tag spiked from 46 degrees Fahrenheit to 78 degrees Fahrenheit, or 8 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius. That rapid descent and temperature increase made the researchers think that another large animal swallowed the three meter shark hole and then plunged into the Stygian depths. They think it was really a goddamn enormous great white shark. I'm under attack from Skibbity Toilets IRL. I know how this sounds, but it's something I'm actually experiencing and I need advice. Be me, no alcohol, no drugs or medication ever. Be living in a relatively small safe city. Go out at night walking to be by myself. Enjoy the cool air and avoid too much sun. I get sunburnt easily. Usually go walking just before dawn, right before sun is about to come up. Be about two months back. Start hearing a weird repetitive sound while walking that I couldn't quite make out. Like something going on in the far distance. Was weird and creepy, but it went away. 
Never really thought too much of it. Keep happening. It seemed to get closer each time. Until one night, it seemed just close and loud enough for me to identify. Realize it was the sound of skibbity toilet. I figured someone was playing it very loudly at 4.30 a.m., which is even weirder. I was never obsessed with that meme or anything. Only I watched a few of those clips when they went viral, and I thought they were kind of weird and creepy. Kind of funny. Never thought about it ever again. Seemed to get closer every night, until one day, I hear it very loud. Look up at the tree line in the morning twilight. See big flying skibbity toilet like in video, surrounded by smaller ones. Standing there, freaked out. Don't know what to do. Suddenly hear and see small skibbity toilets rushing me out of the tree line. Totally frozen with fear and what the fuck. One gets right up on me. Black out. Woke up at home in bed. It's not a dream. Evidence I actually went out that night and came back, but I don't remember how I got back. Freaked out, but eventually, I convinced myself it was just a bad dream or a brain glitch or something. Almost going back to normal routine. Same shit happens again, but more and worse. Try to run. Still got me. Really freaked out. Afraid to tell anyone IRL because they'll think I'm nuts. I need advice.